The Witch's Bedtime Tale. The fascination of the eerie, weird, blood-chilling tales told by old Nancy, Witch of Salem, and Satan, her wise black cat. They are waiting, waiting for you now. Mr. Morgan, are we getting close? We ought to be, according to the picture right Mary Ann gave me. Hold up that torch, Dutch. Sir, I don't see no flat stones yet that you said we got to find. If that girl had only come along to show us, we wouldn't have to fool around like this. You've lived among these Indians long enough to know their women cannot come on sacred ground. She's the high priest's daughter. You'd think she'd take a chance on the taboo. Especially loving me the way she does. She takes great chance helping us find what we seek and to escape into the jungle. They will know it was by her aid, and her life will be... What of it? She's only a squaw. Still, Marianne is a cute little trick at that. <laughs> You've got such a sense of humor, Morgan. Every time you call that Indian girl Marianne, I get good laugh. <laughs> Shut up, you fool. If they find us, do you know what will happen? Yeah, keep your shirt on, Frenchie. It's kind of comical, Dutch, but I call all my girls Marianne, and not being able to speak this one's lingo, I don't know a real moniker anyway. Shh, quiet. Be careful. Yeah, it was safe enough. Every man in the village is out in the jungle for that ceremony they hold in. Yes, the ceremony controls their gods. For out there tonight... They will let a boa constrictor crush a man to death. Listen. Three beats on a drum. That means they could be ready to kill that fellow now. Yeah, God, if my folks back in Joycey knew that their darling little boy was living amongst a bunch of Yukon and Indians who made sacrifices to snakes, they'd turn over in their graves. Even after three months, Living among them, it was difficult for me to realize we found a lost tribe of Aztecs, living like their fathers did 600 years ago. It was lucky they found us when they did, another day lost in that bush, and we would have been dead. That is why I do not like this thing you do tonight. These people saved our lives. They took us in. 
And now you plan to rob them. I hope Frenchie Renault of Devil's Island ain't developing a sense of gratitude all of a sudden. I may have served time on Devil's Island, Morgan, but I, unlike you, wasn't there for murder. That's because you never had the nerve to kill a man, you yellow skunk. Why, you can't. Stop. Morgan. Frenchie. We cannot quarrel. All right, Dutch. Once we get what's beneath those three flat stones, it'll take all three of us to fight our way back to civilization through that bush. Ah, forget it, Frenchie. Morgan, you're sure we'll find these emeralds in the temple? I've already shown you the little ones Mary Ann gave me, and she told me in a sign language that there are big ones where we're going. I wonder what Dutch and me have heard about them. What do you... Stop that. Look, Morgan, Frenchie, here are the three flat stones. This is the place. We found it. Now, don't try to lift them. There's a trick to it. She showed me in the picture writing. You push the stone in the middle and... I got it! Look at that! A passage has opened. The temple is underneath. Come on, down these stairs. Morgan, I do not like this place. What's the matter? I don't know. It's just a feeling I have. I feel something too. Yeah, both of you is yellow. Give me that torch. I'm going down these stairs. You can't call me yellow. Then prove you're not. Come on. Meh, it is dark down here. Morgan, hold up the torch. We don't need it in a minute. According to Marianne, this passage takes a sudden bend into the temple proper where a fire is always burning. Yeah, there it is. It is bright. The temple. Oh my god. We must flee for our lives, quick, quick! Wait, wait, you poor dumb idiots. <laughs> it's only a statue. A statue? Yeah, <laughs> would've had me going for a minute, it looks so natural. Like a real honest-to-god snake coiled up to strike. It's an idol. An image of the boa goddess. Light up that torch, Morgan. The stone snake has a woman's face. Marianne told me the truth. The idol's eyes are emerald. And what emeralds? Where the snake's body joins the woman's face, there's a necklace. More emeralds. We shall be rich, rich. Millionaires. Let's climb up there and get them. What was that? What's wrong? What? What do you hear? Ah, there ain't no way to drum in here. This is just a big old bare room. It is a warning. We are in a sacred place. We must not defile the holy image. Hand me a knife, Butch. What are you going to do? Cut off that necklace and pry loose those emeralds. No, no, no. Ah, that's what we came here for, you fool. Here it goes. The drum again. Please, Morgan, come away. A curse will fall on us if you take the stones. Morgan, let us go from this place. We have enough. I'll go when I got these stones. No, no. It's all right, I've got them. Look, those from the eyes are as big as eggs. I'm rich. I'm rich. Let's get out of here, please. All right, I got all I want now, and I'm a millionaire. A millionaire! Please, let's get away. Listen. It seems to come from inside the snake itself. It struck three times. Yes, three times, like we heard it in the bush outside. It means the boa goddess will take soon a human sacrifice. You guys whine like a pair of old women. We got away from the Indians, okay, didn't we? 
And with another day's chopping, we'll be safe out of this jungle and back to civilization. Forget about a curse and something following us. We are not out of the jungle yet. There is not... There is something following us, Morgan. I've seen it about us in the bush. It is something I know. It's death. Eh, yeah, your grandmother. I am like Frenchie. I did not like the drum beats when we left the temple. Are you guys dumb enough to think a heathen statue of a big snake with a woman's face can really do you any harm? It is not the statue I fear, but the things it stands for. People's thoughts and beliefs. Listen, Morgan. All gods are the same, with different names. For how many centuries, we don't know. An intelligent race has worshipped and feared that great snake we have insulted. Hooey. Three times that drum beat like before, the boa goddess takes a sacrifice. Since that's what's troubling you fellas most, let's figure the drum was calling Mary Ann. Those Indians have probably finished her by now. Too bad. She was a cute little trick even if she was only a squaw. Heh. <laughs> I wondered one easy way for you guys to clear yourselves if you think there's a curse on them emeralds. You just don't have to take your share. Ah, uh, no you don't, Morgan. You would like to cheat us out of them? I thought that would bring you to time. Eh, it's too hot to do any more traveling tonight. I'm gonna grab a few winks. It's your turn to scare up some grub, Frenchie. Ah, uh, all right. Give me your pistol. Nix, I only got two bullets left. You can bring down a couple of birds with your machietta. You're not saving those two bullets for something in particular, huh? What do you mean? Once we are out of this jungle, you will no longer need Dutch and me to help you. You think that I... I will not argue that point. It does not matter anyway. I go and forage. That French stir bugs as crazy as a loon. Maybe. Why are you saving those two bullets, Morgan? Hey, you don't think I'm planning anything against pals like you and Frenchie, do you? Forget it! There's emeralds enough for the three of us. I'm rich. Inside a month, Dutch, I'm going to be sitting inside the swellest hotel in New York. I'm going to become a gentleman, join high fault and clubs, and go in for society and live like a king. Yeah, live. That Frenchman gives me a pain talking about death following us through the jungle all on account of a couple of drum beats he heard in that heathen temple. Morgan, the drum, it's here. It can't be. Gee, now you got me hearing things. Every time it beats. Oh, it don't mean nothing. It don't mean nothing. Ah! Frenchie! Something's got him! A boa constrictor! Get out of the coils! Crushing out his life! There is a curse, and it's striking now! I won't believe it! The jungle is full of snakes! He just happened across the boa's path! Run, Dutch! Run before it comes for us! Aren't you going to try and save him? You have a pistol, Morgan! I'm saving my two bullets. Run, you fool! Now we can split his share! We split his share of death. He's just the first of us to go. I don't believe in that stuff! Look! Look back! The snake has turned its head. Say, it has the face of a woman! Yeah, the face of the boa goddess. Run! 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 Sure, young fella. I'm not stuck up like ordinary millionaires. I'll be glad to give you newspaper the true story of how me and Dutch got here to New York. I'm certainly much obliged, Mr. Morgan. You realize how interested the public is with the man who owns the largest emerald on Earth. Yeah, but I don't want your paper printing no lies about me. Don't you be like those other fellows who wrote that I'm a nervous old man just because they saw me pacing up and down the room like I'm doing now. And don't you say I'm afeard of anything account of me looking over my shoulder and jumping at funny noises. It's just habits of mine. 
And don't you dare write that there's a curse on my emeralds. There ain't no curse. Of course not, Mr. Morgan. That sensational stuff that you object to was all printed when a flash came in from Associated Press. Seems two madmen had stumbled into a little settlement in the Yucatan with a pocket full of emeralds, and a story of a third man who had been crushed to death by a boa constrictor with a woman's face. We couldn't pass up a yarn like that, even if we knew it was ridiculous. And it was ridiculous. Two men have just chopped the way out of the jungle, they're apt to say anything. You're right, that stuff was all a lie. Don't forget to print how I tried to save my partner Frenchie when that big snake got him. And don't say the snake had a woman's face. It didn't. That was imagination. And there ain't no course on my emeralds. None that can reach beyond the jungle, anyway. What was that, Mr. Morgan? Oh, um, nothing. I was just talking to myself. The jungle will make you do things like that, young fella. It's great to be back in the city again. No snake can follow me to a big town like New York. You've spoken of your friends, Frenchie and Dutch. Will you give me their proper names, Mr. Morgan? Frenchie's dead. If I could only forget how he died. Ah, excuse me. The name I knew Frenchie by was Jean Renault. Dutch's real moniker was Adolf Appleman. Adolf Appleman? Yeah, he beat it out to Chicago once we hit the USA. Ah, he ain't nice to reporter guys like me, and he don't give his name in the papers, but you can print that he don't believe in no curse neither. Mr. Morgan, have you seen this morning's paper? Not yet, I just got up. What a story this'll make. No one dreamed he was your partner. Say, what's the matter with you? What are you doing at my telephone? Hello, operator? Get me world 21219. Look at that front page, Mr. Morgan. Read those headlines. Last night in a Chicago hotel room, Adolph Appleman was crushed to death, every bone in his body broken. Hello? Hello? Get me the city editor. The drum beats I heard last night weren't a dream. City desk, you there? Get this. Whopper of a story. The guy crushed to death in Chicago last night was the partner of this guy Morgan. I'm next. I'm next. Now look here, Mr. Morgan. You may have found a million dollars worth of emeralds in South America, but that gives you no right to come here to Chicago and tell the district attorney's office how to run its business. But I gotta know what killed Dutch. Why'd you have his body cremated before I got here to see it? For one reason, his wife ordered it right after the inquest. His wife? You have already been told Mr. Appleman was married to a Miss Smith a few hours before his death. Another reason was the body was too horribly crushed to serve any clues as to the method of murder. Crushed? Crushed like poor Frenchie? But you say it wasn't a snake that did it. Swear it couldn't have been a snake. My dear Mr. Morgan, despite the wild newspaper theories, boa constrictors do not crawl promiscuously through Chicago. And if they did, there could have been no way for such a monster to enter or leave Mr. Appleman's room. No, no way for it to come here from the jungle. Where was Dutch's wife when it happened? Out of the room at the time, she says. But no woman on earth could have crushed your partner as we found him, if that's what you're driving at. I was only wondering if she'd seen anything. If I could only know the way he died. Come in. Excuse me, sir. Mrs. Appleman to see you? Well, ask her to come in. Now, Mr. Morgan, you can talk to her yourself if you like. How do you do? Ah, good morning, Mrs. Appleman. I'm sure you'll be glad to meet your poor husband's former partner, Mr. Morgan. We have met. That's funny. I do feel like you and me have met someplace before. I meant Dutch had spoken of you. Oh, I see, but, but your face is somehow familiar. What was your name before you married him? My first name is Marianne. Marianne? 
Poor Dutch told me it was the name you preferred for women. To think I finally fall for a skirt whose real name is Marianne. How startled you were when I first told you that was my name. Yeah, hit me like a voice from the dead. Not that the squall matters, you understand, but you knew even before I spilled the beans about how we got the emeralds and all. Yes, I knew. Dutch had told me everything. I don't know what I'd done without you since Dutch was killed. A man needs someone around so he won't be all alone to, to think things. After we's married tomorrow, it'll be better still. I only wish you hadn't made me wait a whole year. Yeah, a year and nothing's happened to me. I always knew that curse was just a bunk. Do you have no fear at all anymore? Me? I was never afraid of anything. My hair turning white and my losing weight like I have was just from a rundown condition, the doctor says. Yet if I only knew how Dutch was killed and the explanation of those drum beats, I can't get out of my mind the way I saw Frenchie go. You have explained it all perfectly naturally to me a hundred times. You have no real faith in heathen gods, you know. Of course not. It was just imagination. The boa I saw in the jungle did not have a human face. That's an awful way to die like Frenchie, Marianne. Did you ever see a man killed by a boa? Wraps itself around you, coil on coil, doubling and tripling its own strength, and its eyes look into his, and it fascinates him till he's dumb and helpless. Slowly the coils tighten until the bones crack like pipes and the flesh become like putty and he only screams once. Just once. I can't die like that. I won't die like that. I'm now rich. I've become a gentleman and I'm crazy about you. I want to live. Oh, you don't believe in curses, do you, Marianne? You don't believe a crawling thing from the jungle could reach me, even here? If I believed in the curse, I would believe neither distance nor civilization would have power to stay its vengeance. But you don't believe. Tell me you don't. Like, tell me you think it's only bunk. Yes, I say it like you. Isn't it fortunate we can tell ourselves such things? It is so terrible to be afraid. For I of God who wished to punish hard for a long time before I struck, I would make my victim fear. Don't talk like that. Sometimes you make me afraid because I don't know what you mean. It'll be all right when we're married tomorrow. Then I'll have you to talk to all the time and learn to understand you. You haven't forgotten for my wedding present. I would have the great emerald you took from the Aztec temple. Yeah, like I promised. Then with the one Dutch gave you, you will have the two greatest emeralds in the world. The eyes of the boa goddess. It will be nice to have them. They will match your own eyes, Marianne, for they are green like the emerald. They fascinate me. Green and deep like the emerald. Like the eyes of the boa goddess. At last, Marianne, everyone is gone and we're all alone. You're my wife now. Kiss me. Wait. You mustn't keep your husband waiting. I love you so much. A year I've waited for you, Marianne. You shall wait a short time longer. No other woman has put me off like you have, and I'm crazy about you. Just nutty about your eyes. They fascinate me. Green like emeralds. Why didn't you bring your emeralds, the eyes of the boa goddess, at a wedding? I shall wear them now, for you alone. Are you going to put them on? Well, that's swell. Got them like a kid with you. When I finally fell, I fell hard. I won't be afraid no more now. You'll always be with me. You won't leave me on a wedding night like you left Dutch a year ago. I will not leave you. I did not leave him. If you hadn't left him, you'd have known what killed him. I do know what killed him. Then why ain't you ever told me? Say, what are you talking that way for? Why are you standing there with your back turned towards me? What are you doing, Marianne? You seem to be growing taller. Thinner somehow. What are you doing? Turn around so I can see you. Let me look into your eyes. Look. The emeralds are your eyes. Yeah. Yes, the boa goddess. That drum! That drum means... I claim my final sacrifice. No! No, I can't move! I can only stare in your eyes! Your body is lengthening and changing into a monster snake! Soon, I will coil around you, fold over fold. No! You will only gaze in my eyes and whimper. Only when my coils tighten will you scream just once. Then will I give you your promised kiss, the kiss of death. For a Marianne, who was only a squaw, I begin to coil. Cold! So cold! No, I can't die! 
Morgan, for defiling a people's faith, I bind your feet. Morgan, for betraying a people's hospitality, I bind your arms. <laughs> Morgan, for destroying a woman's love, I bind your heart. For this you have left last of the three. Today, as you yourself love, as after a year of mortal fear, you expire to happiness and peace. Today, I coil around your worthless soul and crack. Oh. And that's the story about the boa goddess, queen of all the snakes. <laughs> What's the lesson in tonight's story, you ask? That's simple. Don't steal, cause justice will catch up to you. <laughs> Well, Satan and I have business to attend to now, don't we, Satan? Important business. Midnight business, Satan. Tonight's episode, The Boa Goddess. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole. Our cast include Sheena McDonald, Joe Kent, Kevin Rimney. Based on the witch's tale by Alonzo Dean Cole. All transition music by Kevin McLeod. www.incompetech.com Join old Nancy and Satan, her wise black cat, again for another episode of The Chili and the Bazaar with The Witch's Bedtime Tale. Copyright 2016, Kevin Rimney Productions. <laughs> <laughs>